First, let me say thank you to Triangle, the event organ organizers, and to our host sponsor, Dutch Post DHL, for making this uh, conference possible. It's actually been a very rich conference. I, my topic today is, is going to be about finding a new place in the paradigm. And we've heard from many of the presenters that there is a new paradigm. And I would say that it's going to be for the post and express operators uh, up to them where they want to stake out. How big, how little, how focused, how diverse they want to be. But it is what they need to set their sights on. And it is an area where if you do not set your sights, uh, you're, you're not going to hit the mark no matter what. So uh, we need to find our place in the new paradigm. It is a time of flux, a time of change, and I would say never before uh, has there been such a speed of change, and this is impacting the post, the express, and I'm going to add another group to this because it influences all of us, and it's, I'm going to include the regulators and the legislators. Uh, I'm confident that post and express companies can innovate and keep pace with the change and find their place. Quite often, though, what they're confronted with is, from a regulatory environment, only the ability to look backwards. And it is very difficult for them to look forward along with us in planning what that might be. So this is going to be shaped by those defining points. And I would say, you know, Brody had a, some great presentation materials, but the environment of the legislature, I think, has shaped many of those places where they've been allowed to innovate and to grow. No surprises, packages, yes. Increased volume is equaling increased revenue. But what's beyond that? What's the future state of the post? What should they focus on? And can they leverage their trust brand, and if so, how? Well, I'll make a quick note. Although this is an emerging growth, hyper-growth area, uh, I don't want to overlook the area of letter volume. So for the traditionalists in the audience, uh, my dad was a letter carrier for 30 plus years. I grew up around uh, postal stations. I knew where he was on his route at any time of the day. If it was two in the afternoon, I knew he would be on Althea Street delivering mail or something like that. So I recognize the importance and that's part of our universal service obligation for many of us. But uh, I think most posts know that business quite well. Uh, there's innovation in sortation, there's innovation in scan reads, there's always improvement in the quality of the scan reads as they go through that. But it is the packages and the parcels and our position with the entire supply chain that goes along with that. But what are some of the obstacles and transformation, you know, posts need to look at? Before it was letters and packages, uh, now it's uh, confronted with e-messages, diversion, e-commerce, and trying to embrace who is the customer. Traditionally, for the last uh, three decades, the customer has been the mailer, the one that puts the postage on it. Uh, and that has changed, and the internet has changed that for us. And what I'm finding for many post is an identity crisis in identifying who their customers are. Uh, they quite often say, well, that, that, those are customers of the mailers. We don't need to worry about them. Um, and those days are gone if you're going to become, if you're going to be, be relevant and sustain your relevancy within the e-commerce parcel market. So you need to embrace, and many of the people this morning have talked about this, embrace knowing who the customers within the supply chain are. Uh, down to the recipient, because ultimately that is the customer. They're the ones who place the order. Someone else fulfills it from a manufacturer. Uh, quite often an e-commerce platform integrator then handles that, and then it's, it's shipped either domestically or internationally using a variety of sources. But we also see the opportunities on there. Um, a couple of these I want to highlight. Um, privacy. Ease of authentication, inter the integrated network solutions. Let me talk about those for a second. One of the things that is very needed within the e-commerce space 
is the ability to create privacy in how we conduct our business. And I th our research in going through this has said that uh, if we could get value for our digital internet personas, then we would be willing to have that. But right now, that digital persona is being monetized by other people within the internet environment, and they're making money with that. The other big thing, especially globally, is authentication. And it is not just authentication of the customer, but it is authentication of the company as well. Uh, are they valid companies? I believe that Post, uh, especially, and this gets to the integrated, especially if they band together, have more knowledge about local businesses and local recipients. And they could create one of the most robust environments for authentication because that is what is very difficult in many transactions. People will say they can, but quite often they can't. In Europe, if you're making an internet buy, uh, knowing where the base of the company is can impact VAT customs, especially when you get into the material returns. And the other area, and this is one I think is, is going to become extremely relevant, it's going through a lot of change and will continue, but it's the aspect of digital currency. What is your post plan for digital currency and how you can be a part of that? Many of you have uh, money order systems and you have other aspects. In certain cases, you've digitized those. Uh, but how can you insert those as part of the platform within the internet in the e-commerce arena? I think that is a great opportunity. But let's take a look at another area around the world. Uh, another, uh, uh, not there yet. So one of the things, there are more than 55 electronic solutions that Post can provide um, it, according to a, the UPU. In a UPU survey of 94 Post, uh, 88 provided at least one or more of these e-services. And then there's the aspect of international growth rate. One of the things I think is important for people to understand that a point digital or uh, electronic services service or e-service without being part of a total platform that you create becomes uh, ultimately non-profitable. It will fail. It will not make you money. Create a platform to provide and link and integrate and you can make that platform as big or as little. Once you do that, then you begin to have uh, e-solutions and e-services that will be relevant, will be valuable, and will draw people within your constituencies. And then the people that are buying will be your customers and consumers as well. Uh, one of the key aspects of a platform is going to connect the consumers or customers the vendors and the shippers and the other supply chain stakeholders. Those are going to be the key components. Now let's take a look at that other market. Deloitte just concluded uh, last month a four-month study between Deloitte, China, and our consumer business research group there in conjunction with the State Post Bureau and looking at the express industry and China. And we found some very interesting aspects of it. Uh, and if you would like the full study, I've just excerpted one quick page. It's a 50-page study that goes into a lot of detail looking at some of the provocative changes that we see coming. And I think that's going to be something that we can look at other countries and say we can look at that as well. Whether you're targeting China as a point of selling into or whether you're looking at it as part of the supply chain. But express operators have, you know, built their success and in infrastructure on a dedicated, integrated design to deliver business-to-business -business segment. That was the early stages within the market. And they were offering speed of track and trace options. But now they've recognized that that is diversifying and that they need to look at the B2C market as well. And where... B2B had been larger shipment volumes. We're looking at micro-packaging, two kilos or less, uh, that are becoming extremely relevant, even domestically within China. 
But one of the things we're looking at is there is consolidation already taking place. And that consolidation is only going to accelerate. Uh, we've seen that in um, a recent effort, uh, recent uh, taking a position by Alibaba in a post in Southeast Asia. Uh, we're looking at one of the things, the, the volume, the total volume for the industry continues to rise significantly uh, as opposed to the brick and mortar, the online growth rate is high, it's still a small percentage. But we're also seeing a, in the last quarter or two, we saw a downward price on the per piece on the uh, shipping cost. So we're seeing that competitive drive uh, beginning to be uh, impacted where the uh, internet aggregators are looking at more and more of how to squeeze the profit margins on that. So I want to talk a little bit about the uh, how do we improve the performances and operations. And this is going to be a little bit uh, within the context of the, the parcel industry and what we call agile innovation. So post, and this is a very traditional consultant kind of loop feedback. So you build, you experiment, you build and you track the metrics or KPIs and then you learn and then you pivot or you continue on. So one of the key things, what does this encircle? What is your core? When I said at the beginning, we need to know what our core, who our core customers are before we can find our place within the new paradigm. So what is your core? Uh, I think in the past, because most of the legacy postal systems have been large, monolithic, very expensive, that is a culture that we're not used to. So one of the things of, from a culture aspect is given the ability to experiment, have some failures, grow, learn, and then find the right path on that too. So fail fast, learn quick, and move on in your feedback loop on how do you improve the operations. And this is within, mainly focusing within the feedback market. And the learning aspect, I will say that this is where social media needs to take a front seat. Uh, this is where we can begin not to learn from ourselves, but to learn from those outside of our normal loops. To create a social media that would help you understand and learn and continue to improve. Uh, so connecting with others is going to be a very important part of that. Post of Tomorrow will leverage customer, consumer trust and digital capabilities to enhance their performance. The internet is not private and not nearly as private as we would like. However, most people trust Post. While that trust in the physical and the mail is there, our trust in the digital side of post is almost non-existent. Now, I will say that some of the major organization, we've talked about Amazon, we've talked about Alibaba. If we go back 10 or 15 years, they did not have any trust. They built that, they executed that. So the post need to learn how to find their place. As Thomas talked about this morning, there's going to be this congregation as post extend further into the digital world and as digital organizations extend more into the distribution including the possibility of the last mile. One of the things uh, you need to understand or it, I would say execute against is knowing what your digital brand is. Does it exist? Have you defined it? And what will that be and who is it who is there? Deloitte did, over the last year and a half, we did multi-generational research on people that were active within the digital e-commerce internet environment. And here's what we saw from the consumer citizens and what they wanted. They wanted access, very important. They wanted privacy. Now, that privacy part was uh, a place where there was a split. If you were 25, you didn't care as much. Um, but if you were 55, you cared more. And 
from the research we've seen, that was a uh, increasing scale. The anonymity and how you execute and not having a lot of your data passed about was very important. And the ability, and this struck hard with the 20 to 30 euro consuming public, is if I had the opportunity to monetize the value of my information for me and my digital persona, I would be interested in going to a platform that did that. I think posts have a unique opportunity. Access is already provided, but can you differentiate yourself by providing privacy, anonymity, and helping consumer citizens monetize their value? Truly something that is a, 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 a noble goal for the post and who they serve and what they've done. Consumer confidence and enhanced cross-border delivery are going to be key in meeting e-commerce demands within the European market. Confidence is critical uh, for many reasons, but there was a survey that was done, again I will quote, I believe it was the UPU, and cross-border delivery is considered to be an obstacle by 57% of the retailers. 40 almost 47% of the uh, consumers declared they worry about delivery in cross-border transactions. Obviously an area where we can benefit as post and express companies in enhancing and dialing down those levels of concern between the consumers and the vendors and sellers. Greater interoperability. Our industry can no longer continue to have borders of not sharing their information about their customers. Uh, many corporations do this already. Learn how to use an NDA. Learn how to use other things. But if it is incumbent that we bring sharing of information across the borders in order to facilitate and accelerate e-commerce, if we don't, other organizations will. I want to talk a little bit about innovation. Uh, it's going to be key in the market. There's many things up here uh, and some examples, uh, very familiar. You know, SingPost has created digital marketing ser services. They've created a digital platform. Croatia Post and Office Supply, Swiss Post, distant selling with end-to-end -end solutions. There's many others. These are just a few examples of posts who have innovated and brought into the market. But how do you innovate? You know, you've got to create an environment for innovation. You've got to create an environment that says it's okay to think outside of the box. Creating innovation labs that enable and encourage lean development of concepts and emphasis on quick small tests that validate market concept and operational uh, entry into that. It's going to be key for the post. What is your innovation program? Is it traditionally around mail or is it looking at the new market? Have you formalized that? A few conclusions. Uh, you know, the strategic importance, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave these things up there about the messages and the packages, those are known. And we've talked about the challenges and opportunities for Post and Express companies all morning, and it is what we should be talking about. Uh, E-commerce is going to be the key part and the key destination of the paradigm shift. But I would say that the major players and the major delivery opportunities that exist today will be wildly different 10 years from now. We've talked about drones. Brody talked about the florist in the US. There's a uh, express company in southwestern uh, China that has been doing these shipments uh, using drones for the last year with great success. But I also want to say the strategic importance of the e-commerce and packages. We need to add the regulators. We need to add the government to this list of people. And I doubt, I don't know if we have any in the room, but I would encourage you to look forward 
along with the post and the express companies. It is vital to the success if we do not do this and allow post to compete effectively by reaching outside of traditional zones and cross borders, then we're going to ultimately hurt what's been the cornerstone of post for the last several hundred years, and that's the universal service obligation. I think it is a great time. It is going to be a time of huge excitement to be involved in shaping that. And thank you very much.